What's up Schwartz Force? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a talking hands video for you because I am short on time and I have the opportunity to do this head to head comparison between these two watches here, which as you can see, are homages of the Rolex GMT Master to Pepsi. Now, my brother-in-law's son recently started getting into watches, and when I showed him a bunch of options to consider, he loved the look of the Pepsi, so I decided to pick up the Hollins GMT, which has no video reviews that I could find, and then of course the Pagani Design GMT, which has a ton of reviews. And I'll compare them side by side for you all, and let you know which one he decided to keep. Now for this head to head, I'm scoring each category between one to 10, keeping in mind that these are 80 to $100 homage watches, maybe a little bit more if you pick it up on Amazon here in the States. So I'm rating it as such and not alongside the ranking of what the real Rolex would score in these same categories. So keep that in mind. My scores in a few of these categories are subjective. So I invite you to score them with your own rating and let's see how closely we are at the end of this video. Now that said, let's get into it. So first I wanna show you each watch side by side with the real Rolex reference 126710 BLRO, which we'll of course nickname the BLRO. And then of course, side by side with the older Neo vintage model, which is the Rolex reference 16710. So you can see some of the differences and similarities at a glance. Let's begin with the packaging. The Pagani design uses a simple branded cardboard box with foam insert. There is a warranty card and instruction booklet. It's really nothing special, so I'm giving it a five. A lower score would have been given if it was just simply wrapped in plastic or bubble wrap, so it is obviously better than that. Now the Holland's boxing is definitely better. Granted, it is unbranded, it is larger, it has a nice soft interior, and also has a warranty card and instruction booklet. There is a miniature screwdriver included for adjusting the bracelet, which I like that additional touch to detail. And I like that they also included a printout showing how to adjust and use the GMT function on the watch. So I'm giving this one a seven. Now moving to the style category, this is really subjective because depending on your taste, you're either going to consider one being better based on how closely it mimics the original Rolex design, or you may consider the better one to be that which has some original elements or design features to it. Now for me personally, an homage scores better if it more closely resembles or copies the original design. The Pagani design is more of an homage to the BLRO, being that it has the high polished center links, it has the more modern bezel design. However, there are a lot of elements that are not like the Rolex, such as the exhibition case back, the date wheel and magnification is off slightly, the ray hot is sterile, the crown is too big, and the second hand is different as well. I still give it a seven though, because at a glance, it looks really good. Now the Hollands is much more similar to the Rolex features, such as the second hand, the Ray Hot with the branding etched into it, the crown size, the date wheel magnification, and that solid case back. But it's also mixed with the old 16710 design by having the all brush bracelet. So for that reason, I give it a seven as well. For the weight, both watches are very close. Size to fit my wrist, the Bagani is coming in at 141 grams and the Hollands weighs in at 140 grams. Moving to the bracelet, again, they're very similar. Both have male in links and if measuring them, the lug to lug height with those male in links comes out to 53.1 millimeters on the Pagani and 52.3 millimeters on the Hollands. Both taper from 20 millimeters down to 15.5 millimeters. They both have vented slots and both feature screw pins. While the difference in the male in-link distance is minimal, I have to give the advantage to the Hollands taking a score of eight over the Pagani score of seven. Next, we'll examine the clasps. Again, both very similar. They have spring-loaded ends, both lock in nicely and have a fold-over locking mechanism. They both have rather loose tolerances and play in them and the Pagani clasp is just a tad shorter than the Hollands clasp. The Pagani clasp is supposed to have that five millimeter diver extension feature. However, this one does not budge, so I can't even adjust it. And assuming it would work as designed, I would give the overall clasp a six. Now the Hollands features a glide lock style clasp that does work well, but it's just a tad gritty and clunky feeling to use. So I can only give it an eight at the best. Next is the legibility of the dial and the bezel. Reading the time on both watches is very simple, but the differences are subtle. The red GMT hand on the Pagani is just a bit brighter in color, but the hands on the Hollum seem wider and easier to see. 
The crystal and the cyclops on the Hollands also seems clearer. The hour markers are positioned more like the Rolex, where the Pagani hour markers are practically touching the minute markers. Just looks a little off to me. Also, the hour markers on the Pagani seem more dull looking and just overall less bright. Now, all of these features are relatively minor, but it does give a slight edge to the Hollands, taking a score of 9 over the Pagani, which gets an 8. Loom is a tie, both earning a 6. While the Hollands uses green Luminova that is substantially brighter at first over the Pagani's blue loom, once they both fade, they stay pretty dim but readable for many hours in complete darkness. Next, let's move to the bezel. Both have aluminum inserts and both are 120 click unidirectional bezels. The scallop edging on the Pagani is much sharper and easier to turn. It sounds great, there's very little back play, but the bezel is a lot more loose than I like to see. I can actually move it with just one finger. That's how loose it is. It's also a very fat bezel, which I personally don't like, as the Rolex does have a thinner bezel profile. Now the Arabic numerals on the bezel are etched deep and they have a nice brightness to them, but the font seems a bit too thin. Also the dots between the numbers are a bit too small and the spacing seems off as well. Now that said, I still give it a seven. The Holland's bezel seems more stiff to turn. However, it has smoother scalloped edgings, so it's a bit harder to get a good grip on. I do still prefer the tightness of the Holland's though. Now, the colors on the Holland seem a bit less bright than the Pagani, but the font thickness is more accurate to the Rolex and the dots seem more true to the BLRO style as well. The Holland's bezel is also thinner, which I like a lot more. On this particular version, there is a minor defect on the triangle at 12 o'clock. So QC issues aside, because it doesn't sound as good, I'm only giving the Hollands a seven as well. Now the crystal is where the Pagani leads over the Hollands for sure. The Pagani design sports a sapphire crystal, no AR coating, and is nice and flush with the bezel. I give it a nine overall. And had there been AR coating applied, it would have taken a 10 easily. The Hollands also lacks AR coating, but it's only sporting a mineral glass crystal, which is a huge bummer because in the listing, it even states that it has sapphire, but that is not the case. The crystal also is raised just slightly above the bezel, so I can only give the Hollands a five. Let's talk movements. The Pagani design is using, from what I can tell, the Mingzhu DG3804 GMT automatic movement, Pagani refers to the movement as a Pearl DG5833, which if I had to guess includes a modified date wheel as the font is different than that on the actual Mingzu. It features hacking and hand winding and beating at 21,600 vibrations per hour. This particular watch has an accuracy of around minus three to minus five seconds per day, which is great at this price point. I couldn't confirm what movement the Hollands is using. So if you can tell looking at this video, please drop a comment down below. I would love to find out what actual movement is being used here. It does also feature hand winding and hacking, and it's also running at three hertz, but it has an accuracy of minus eight to minus 10 seconds per day. So based on these two watches, the Pagani is more accurate and actually had less beat error as well. So it's gonna get an eight and the Hollands will only get a seven. Now for the crown, I have to give the advantage to the Hollands. It's sized correctly, and the spacing on the coin edge is just right with larger gaps between the teeth. Also, when unscrewing or screwing the crown in, it has a really nice feel to it. Winding the crown also feels good, and setting the time, the date, and the GMT hand are all nice, giving this crown an eight. Now, the Pagani design crown is just too big and bulky, and it has a very gritty feel to it. Winding it does not feel as nice, but when setting the date or the time or changing the GMT hand, it does feel fine as well. Now, I personally prefer the branding and all high polish that we see on the Hollands instead of the contrast coloring used by Pagani, leaving much to be desired and a score of only five. Water resistance is the same at 100 meters for both watches. I consider 100 meters to be the minimum on sports watches like these, so I give both a seven. 200 or 300 meters would have resulted in higher scores, but let me be clear, 100 meters by no means is a deal breaker for me. The Cyclops was a bit surprising for me. The Rolex does have an AR coated Cyclops and when looking at the Pagani design, it's extremely reflective. So much so that in a lot of lighting situations, it can actually be a bit hard to read the date clearly. The two and a half times magnification is good, but because the font on the date wheel is already larger, it actually makes it too large and you almost have to look at the date straight on or it'll be cut off at just about any slight angle. 
The Hollins does also have two and a half times magnification, but because the date font is smaller, it actually looks correctly proportioned like we see on the BLRO. I can't confirm, but the Holland Cyclops also looks like it has AR coating applied. So I prefer the Hollands, which I gave an eight and the Pagani I gave a six. These basically cancel out on the next feature, the date wheel itself. The fonts on the Pagani while larger is nice and crisp and it looks really, really good. It also has a quick click over at midnight. So even though it's off by a large time when it clicks over, the change is a really nice detail to get right. So for these features, I got to give the Pagani design an eight. The Hollands font is a bit messy up close and it lacks the clearer finishing on the edges like the Pagani. Also, the date changes over gradually from about 10 p.m. and then finally clicks over around midnight. So for that, I can only give it a six. Overall finishing may be surprising when looking at this video, but in the hand and on the wrist, the differences are very obvious. The Pagani has very rough edges on just about everything, from the clasp to the case back, the bracelet, especially with the crown as mentioned before. I do give credit for having that decorated movement shown and that crisp date wheel, but overall finishing, I feel I can only give it a five overall. The Hollands just feels better. And the addition of details like the Ray Hot edged branding, the Glide Lock clasp, and that smoother crown, these are all details that show more attention when into the watch overall as a final product. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a seven. Now final score is for the value of each watch. I give the Pagani a nine overall because if you can overlook the finishing or if you're willing to actually hand finish it yourself, for what you're paying for, you're getting excellent specs and materials. And while I enjoy a lot about the Hollands, the lack of Sapphire is a big setback, which only allows me to give this watch a seven for its overall value. Total scores come out to Pagani with a 103 and the Hollands with a 107. Both watches nail certain details, yet they both miss the mark in other areas. That said, my brother-in-law's son chose the Pagani design. I think it was the right choice for him. He likes the high polish center links, and I personally like that it has that quick date set change at midnight, and also better accuracy will be the way to go for him. For me personally, I would actually still choose the Hollands over the Pagani because it's more true to the Rolex design, the glide lock clasp is just too functional to pass up, and the easier to read date wheel does it for me. I've owned many mineral crystal watches, and knock on wood, I've only scratched maybe one or two of them in all my years of wearing them. So while I prefer Sapphire, the mineral isn't enough to pass up on the Hollands for me. I just wish it was a bit cheaper on the cost. So what score did you end up with? I'm kind of curious, being that there were no videos on the Hollands, how do you feel? Would you still go for the Pagani or would you give the Hollands a chance? I definitely want to hear your thoughts down below. And as always, May the Schwartz be with you, and I look forward to seeing y'all at the next one. Take care.